Okay, so here's our Ford Explorer, and uh, the battery keeps on charging down on it, and my first intuition was is that it was possibly the alternator or the battery going bad, and so I took the battery into the gas station and they, they tested the uh, cold cranks, and uh, they said it tested fine for 850, so I uh, figured I was going to take it in and have someone work on it, but everybody's closed today, so here I am working on my car again. So um, I started charging up the battery, I ran a long extension cord out here, and uh, the thing was stuck at about 37%, and so I disconnected the battery terminal, because I suspected that maybe the uh, something was drawing current and not allowing it to charge up, and when I did that, the, uh, the charger went up to uh, about 68%. So, I figured I'd check the voltage, because if it's not drawing any current, it shouldn't have a voltage from this disconnected battery terminal to the battery. And uh, it looks like it is about 13 volts across there. So that doesn't sound good. It sounds like something's charging down the battery that we don't want. Let's see how much current. Now, you got to be careful when you do the current. I'm going to set it on the, the biggest amp scale, because it can ruin things if you try to draw too much current. It's like shorting something out when you when you go to the current settings. Okay. Okay, so we have, uh, we're measuring the current across there. And it looks like we're drawing about uh, a quarter, a little bit over a quarter of an amp. Which is uh, really not too great. So I suspect that there's something going on inside the electrical where it's drawing current and it shouldn't be drawing. It's just dropping a little bit, but it doesn't seem like a good situation. Let's look into it a little bit. Okay, the first thing I suspect is a bunch of relays in here. And I just started pulling them out, watching the current over here. See if the, the current gets better as I pull these things out or not. And uh, that one didn't seem to affect it, so I'm just going one by one, pulling them out and sticking them back in to see if that changes anything. Let's see if uh, we can find anything that way. Okay, so the next thing I was going to do is start going through and pulling out the fuses, and uh, one by one, and seeing if that changes the current, and sticking them back in. This one gives a little surge when I put it back in for some reason. But it's still got current even when it's not plugged in. So go through them one by one and see if I can eliminate that current drainage. See if that's a problem. And I'll see if we can figure out where the current's going. Okay, so I found out this fuse right here, when I pull it, here we'll watch it. I pull it out, the current drops way down way, way, way down. And, uh, so, I guess maybe we'll do some research and figure out what the heck that fuse is. It might be a master fuse or something. Why it's current's dropping so much when I pull that out. Okay, so I decided to pull that problem fuse and hook the battery back up. And we will see what doesn't work. I tried to look on the web and it said it was, uh, I think, the audio and some other accessories for the driver's seat. And uh, I just want to see if the alternator charges when I start her up. Oh, look at that. That's okay, so the fuel went down and up. Let's, let's take a look at what the engine is doing out there. Okay, so we got our voltmeter hooked up again. And, uh, it still looks like it's too low for it to be charging. There's our alternator over here. And here's the sound coming out of it. But uh, I guess pulling that fuse wasn't enough, maybe the alternator is bad. 
Okay, so I guess we're going to try to take off the alternator, and I believe this is a uh, 3 8 inch ratchet, and uh, there's a position, the uh, tensioner down there, it's hard to see it in front of this cable, but there's, or the hose, there is a, uh, I guess a square hole down, down there that you can stick this ratchet in. I'll get the ratchet in that little lever arm thing. This, this guy right here it goes down. And uh, we'll loosen up the cable and hopefully we can take off the alternator without doing too much else. Okay, so there, down there, we have the ratchet here into that square hole in this uh, tensioner thing. I don't know if you can see that very well. But uh, we'll try to push down on this. When we do that, I push down really hard on that. Okay. Then the uh, belt loosens up. Okay. Okay, so I push down on the tension arm and I'll try to loop this uh, belt uh, above that guy. And now I can bring the tension arm back up. And when I do that, that has uh, released the uh, tension from our alternator, so I can just take the belt off from on top of that. And uh, we'll undo the screws and hopefully get this thing taken apart. Okay, so here we have the alternator, and there's like a cable up here on top. We've got to undo the electrical connections. So let's zoom in, and I have a uh, I think it's 11 millimeter ratchet here, and we'll just try to. Maybe that's not the right size for that one. Here. Looks like 10 millimeters fits on this one better. Okay, so we'll undo that one. Okay. Not to drop that bolt down there, and uh, there we go. So we got that connection off, and there's a nut for that one. And let's get this plug off. May get some pliers or something. Try to pull that out. I think there's a little release on the back that you got to undo. Okay, for the second plug, I just found that if you kind of reach under here like that and let's get in there so you kind of reach down behind there's like a little uh, tab that you got to pull up on and you pull up on like that and then the plug just pops right out because it's got this uh, where is it this springy plastic thing so you got to pull back on that and then this plug will come out now we just got to undo some some bolts here, and the alternator should hopefully just come right off, and we'll replace it. Okay, so it looks like there's two bolts holding this alternator on, one down here and one up there. And uh, I uh, found a 13 millimeter ratchet, and we'll try to take this thing off with that. Okay, I'll loosen that bolt up, and then I guess this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to get in there, but maybe should have taken off the air filter, but okay, we'll work on that one down there, and hopefully we'll get the alternator off in a second, and put the new one on. Okay, so this bottom one was way seized up. And so, you don't want to let this thing slip. I ended up taking out the air filter and moving it off to the side. And uh, I took one hammer and stuck it there. Took another hammer and banged it.
banged on it until I broke it free because you don't want to oh, freaking let these things strip out or you'll never get them off. It'll be a big problem. And also, let me get this off of here. Oh, it's kind of stuck on there now. But I got a six-pointed six pointed ratchet thing. Sometimes you can tap them a little with the hammer. They will come off. But anyway, the six-pointed one will slip less, so that's what a six-pointed one looks like. And let's get this guy off. And uh, we'll get the alternator out of there and get the new one on. Okay, so let's get this top bolt off. I want to get the bottom one off because it was stuck. Okay, there we go. Okay, it looks like I miscalculated. There's actually a third screw holding this thing together. And it ha it, it's uh, got a bolt sticking up so high that I cannot put a normal socket on there. But fortunately, I have a box and one half inch, which is about the same size. It seems to fit over it. So, let's get that on there. Okay. Let's see if we can see that. See, that goes over the bolt. It fits down. And we'll see if we can get that thing undone. And hopefully we'll get that alternator out of there. Okay, again, these bolts are put on way too tight. Nothing that a couple hammers can't take care of. Let's bang on it for a while. Looks like it's coming loose. Okay, so it looks like this last bolt is different, so I had to get a, a long socket to get down over that since it sticks out so far. And of course, I got the six pointed one because I want to not have it slip. Because if it slips and it rounds off that bolt, it's going to be in bit. We're going to have a lot problems. So let's, let's get that guy on there and uh, try to put a, we put a bunch of WD-40 on it so hopefully that will fix our problem. Okay, I finally got a big enough lever arm to break this thing free. Just slide that over the end of the wrench here like so. You can put a lot of torque on it and it finally broke free. Well, let's get that alternator out of there, and we'll get the new one in. Okay, here, we got the old alternator out. And this last bolt here, I don't know why, they made it different so you couldn't put a normal socket over it. I had to get an extended socket. Uh, I don't even know why they did that. Just to make it difficult to work on, I guess, because thank you, thank you, you guys, the engineers there at Ford. Anyway, let's put the new alternator in. Okay, here's our brand new shiny alternator. Looks really shiny and nice. It's got the same three bolt holes on it and everything. Same type of plugs. So let's stick her back down in the hole. Let's take a look down there where the hole is. That's where the other one was. Right, right down in here. Yeah, see that? Okay. So stick this guy back down inside of there like that and get the screws in place. Oh my god. What a pain. Okay, we'll just put all these screws back in here. And, uh, and hopefully we'll get that alternator all put back together and test it out. Okay, so here we go. We're tightening up the bolts. Getting all three bolts good and tight. That one, and there's one more up there. Get these guys all tightened in. And uh, then we'll put the belt on next and plug in the plugs and see how it works. Oh, and actually, before you put that top bolt on, remember to put this contact here that hooks up to the wire of the ground. All right, the circuit's not going to work very well without a ground on it. There'll be no way to return the current, so get that ground connected in there first. Okay, and then you can tighten it up. Okay, so we have two electrical contacts to make. We got this one here, 
which plugs back into there like that. And then there's this one, which is a loop. It goes over the top, and then you got a little nut here that goes on top of that loop. I can get in there without dropping it. Okay. So we got that nut back on there, like so. And we'll just tighten that guy up. And uh, electrical contact should be in place then. Okay, there we go. We got a little ratchet here. We can tighten that nut up. I've peeled the rubber back a little bit. So we'll get that nut good and tight on top of the alternator. So it makes good electrical contact. And then we'll be able to put the belt on. Okay, that's pretty tight. And I'll put the rubber back over top. Okay. Okay, so there we got all the bolts in and the electrical contacts. Now we're going to try to put the belt on, kind of loosen up the belt so it's kind of sitting over the pulleys. You probably want to make sure it's stretched over all the pulleys that are supposed to be stretched over. And there's some kind of diagram that tells you which way it's supposed to go. I believe that's ours right there, 4.0 liter. Okay, so let's get that ready. Okay, again, I have the 3 8 ratchet down there into the tensioner, the tensioner arm down there. And uh, I'm going to try to hook this belt back up over top of this. And then all I did last time is I flipped it under that guy, so I'm going to tension it and then try to flip it under there. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. Okay, so here I'm going to pull down on the tensioner arm. Let's see if I can tuck this belt under here while keeping all the belts on the pulleys. Oh, God. And put that on that pulley. Oh, my God. Wow. What a pain. I think it's almost there, though. Oh, God let it up. I don't think I have enough travel on the ratchet. I'm going to have to ratchet it one more and then bring it down. There. Okay, there. Looks like I got it around that pulley. Okay, so it's around that pulley. There's the ratchet with the tensioner arm. It's around that pulley. It's around all these pulleys over here. And I think we're good to go. I'm going to put the air filter back on because I had to take that off. And then we'll test it and see how it works. Oh, and yeah, don't forget to pull this wrench out of there. If you start the car up with that in there, you will be sorry. Okay. The belt is good and tight. It looks like it's all over all the pulleys, as far as I can tell. Okay, so let's uh, get it back together. We'll test it. Okay, there we go. Let's test the battery before we start it. 12.28 volts, and uh, that's about normal for a, 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 a charging battery. And let's start her up. Oh, and now it looks like we're up to 14. 14. Four. So it looks like putting a new alternator in our car has fixed the problem. There we go. There's our alternator. Now we'll get two to the belt. Okay. Look at that. Brand new alternator in the car. Okay. Anyway, this is uh, Dr. James, and thanks for watching.